Um, let's kind of let's kind of start off how you went from uh, doing open mics to where you have like comedy as like a job now. Um, so I started really young. I started when I was 16 and I was living, I was in Jersey clearly with my folks and I would come in on the weekends on New Jersey transit into the city. And I did anything I was capable of doing. I got kicked out of a lot of clubs cause I was really young and I still look young. So it was, it was definitely worse when I was a teenager. Um, but anywhere that I could sneak into anywhere that I could do it open mic, I did it. And then um, I did some like bringer shows. I don't think they do those as much anymore. We're talking about almost 20 years ago. But yeah. It was like, if you brought a couple of paid guests, you would get X amount of time. The good thing about them was that if you utilize them correctly, meaning that like you had a solid set and you made a tape from it, or you had a good show, a lot of those bookers, not all of them, but a fair amount of those bookers actually saw your potential and might help you get like guest spots maybe not paid work, but like just got you out of the kind of open mic scene and got you to just be doing more kind of somewhat legitimate shows. So I was doing open mics, I was doing bringer shows, and then I started uh, barking. Again, something that's probably not around where you hand out flyers for stage time. Okay. And I did all of it. Like when I, was at, when I was in high school, I would do it just on the weekends. And then when I moved to New York, when I was 18, I was doing it every single night probably anywhere from two to four shows a night, depending on, you know, weekdays different. So I was doing up to like 15 shows a week. It, they could be the shittiest show. Uh, the show could literally be me and you yeah. and I would still be doing it. Like you could not determine, like I would be pissed, but yeah. you, anybody that was sitting listening, I did the show and it was all about just getting comfortable with the words coming out of my mouth, being comfortable on stage. So Every, I said no, I literally didn't say no to a spot for like four years. Didn't matter how shitty, how far away it was, whatever. If I had to pay money, if I had to hand out flyers in zero degree weather, I did all of it. And through that, I just got um, really comfortable. And, uh, and I'm, I'm very much a, um, I wouldn't say I'm a perfectionist, but I definitely have OCD. And I have this like, I'm, I was just always thinking about the jokes and always making them better. So if I had a show at eight and one part got a laugh and another part didn't, by the time I did my 10 p.m. show, I've changed something about it so that it was stronger. So that if I did a midnight show, it was even stronger. So imagine if I it got stronger in a night, it would get super strong by the end of the week if I'm doing 15 shows. So I was constantly editing and whatever. And I think that the, the diligence of getting comfortable on stage constantly rewriting and getting my jokes stronger I just kind of push through the open mic scene I think a little faster than others so I would say by the time I was 19 I was doing bar shows for free so sadly open mics is you lose money and then yeah. bar shows is like just to show up and tell jokes you're like I'm winning yes. and then by the time I was 19 I got passed at most of the comedy clubs in New York and by passed it means you get paid spots so I'm not doing weekends, but like yeah. at 19, I was doing Tuesdays for $25, which again, for yeah. like a 19 year old that never even thought anybody would care about them. It was a big deal, but everything I did um, was about being able to just do stand up. Like it was clearly, I wanted people to recognize me and, and have clout in this world that was important to me, but everything was about just getting, becoming a stronger comic. And I wasn't above any spot. So even when I was doing paid stuff, I was still would do open mics. I still would do free spots. I would still do um, anything that I thought would make me better. And weirdly enough, what stand up, you, it's never a clean break. It's not like, think how like most people are like, you get promoted and now you're up here yeah. and then you get a raise and now you're up here. It doesn't work that way. So you'll be doing open mics and getting paid spots at the same time. Mm -hmm. And if you, if I would have only done the paid spots, I would have gone from 15 shows a week to Facts. maybe two. Facts. And that's not enough to get better. So I would have two paid spots and now 15 non-paid spots. And then as you got better, you'd have five paid spots and then you'd have to, so it was always about keeping, I even today, I mean, it's much harder in a pandemic, but up until the pandemic, I try not to do anything less than five to seven shows a week, just because I'm always creating. But um, on an average week, when things, when I'm touring, whenever I'm, I'm doing probably about 10 to 12 shows a week, sometimes again, up to 15, uh, different varieties. Sometimes I'm headlining, sometimes I'm doing 10 to 15 minute spots. But I think the biggest thing is people, you can't look at comedy as if I'm, I'm here now, therefore I don't have to do these shitty shows. The shitty shows still have value. Mm -hmm. So the shitty shows are where I do my new material. The paid spots is where I'm just like a pro. 
and every joke hits. So um, even after I started getting paid, you know, I was hosting and then I was featuring a couple of things, but I was mostly hosting. And then I got to feature and I would headline a little bit, but I'm still mostly featuring and headlining a little bit too. So it's, it's never this like, you're a headliner now and you'll never yeah. have to do a shitty gig. I'm still doing free spots because that's where I try out my new stuff, but then I'm also headlining around the world. So it's, I think that's the biggest thing is that this, this jump is, it's not, it's, it's, it's not seamless. It's clunky. And it's about how much you want to work. And I've always wanted to work maximum amount as yeah. possible. 